Hello everyone and welcome back to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start our playthrough of Horrified. The game comes with a really nice reference card. It tells us our first phase is our hero phase. We can do a multitude of different actions. We can move. We can guide. So we can actually guide villagers around. We can try and pick up items. We can share items with heroes in our same space. We can advance a task by using the specified um, items at the location. Or we can even defeat a monster. Finally, we can do our special action. Two of our three players have special actions. Our mayor doesn't. Also, any player can play perks at any time. After that, the monster phase happens. We draw one of the uh, monster cards. We look at the top of the card, and it'll tell us what items we place. Then it'll tell us what event happens, if any. And then it'll finally tell us what monsters will strike, will strike and how they will strike. We're going to have our first player be the professor. So he gets to take four of those actions, and you can do each action up to four times. So I could do the special action four times if I wanted. That would just take my four actions. What I think we'll do with our professor is, since he is worried the most about Frankenstein, since he's that close to him, and come on, he's a professor. Frankenstein used to be somewhat of a professor. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to move the professor here for action one. Action two, he's going to pick up this church crucifix. Okay, so that's action two. Action three, he's going to move into Frankenstein space. Now, you can move in and out of monster spaces. They will not stop your movement. What we're then going to do is use this crucifix item to help us move along and teach Frankenstein that he's actually a human. That means we'll have to discard this item so we no longer have an item with us. And you put that item in a discard pile. After all the items are gone from the bag, you can go ahead and take all the ones in the discard pile and put it back into the bag. That just ensures that you don't keep drawing the same type of items. Because this item was a level 4 item, we get to increase his humanity by 4. We need to get all the way to 11, but that's still a start. Then what we can do is we can actually move Frankenstein up to 4 spaces. Remember, we don't want them to get together or go into the same space until they're both human. So I'm going to try and push him farther away from the bride. Also, I want him out of my space. In case he activates, he'd attack me, and that wouldn't be good. I think what I'll do is I will push him one, two, three, four. So he's way over here in the abbey, and the dungeon is way up there. I can't even get it on screen. <laughs> so that's good. They are far away, and he's also far away from me, so he can't do any point of damage to me. All right, so we've now completed our turn. We could play any perk cards that we wanted, but I don't think we're ready for that yet. So let's go ahead and draw a monster card. I mentioned that we could lose if the tear track goes all the way up to seven. The other way we can lose is if this deck runs out. Okay, so we, that is our little bit of a timer. So we'll draw our top one. Okay, the first thing we see on the top is that there'll be three new items that are going to be placed on the board. So I'll draw them from the bag, and we have an item at the inn. Oh, I think we need an item from the inn. Another item from the inn, and we have an item at the tower. So I'll place those on the board. Then what we have is a worried fiancé. So this is actually a villager. Now, villagers can help us because we can send them somewhere uh, or bring them to their safe location, and they can give us a perk. But they also give another uh, thing that the monsters are going to try and go for. And if they defeat them, <laughs> you know what happens. We increase terror. So we will place Elizabeth at the mansion. And then down here, this will tell us what enemies activate. So Frankenstein will activate. Then the bride will activate. And then the enraged enemy will activate. The enraged enemy right now is, or frenzied enemy, that would be Frankenstein and the Bride. Now, whenever Frankenstein and the Bride is activated with this frenzy ability, it's only Frankenstein that will be activated. So Frankenstein's actually going to be activated twice. It'll be Frankenstein, the Bride, and then Frankenstein. This tells us how much movement they have, and then if they're in a location with either a hero or a villager, they'll roll this amount of dice. I should also mention that during the monster phase, we cannot play any of our perk cards. So even if we had a perk card that maybe would help us here, can't use it yet. Can only use it during the hero phase. And this isn't good <laughs> because Elizabeth is going to show up here in the mansion. She's trying to get to the tower. It said so on the top of her uh, token. I just wanted to zoom up quick so you could see that. So that tells you where their safe location is. If you can get them to the tower, they will be removed from the board and you gain a perk card. That isn't going to happen, most likely. Frankenstein is activating twice, you guys, and Elizabeth is right there. I did also place our items on the board, so we had two more at the inn and one at the tower over there. So now we're going to activate the enemies, starting with Frankenstein. 
So they will always look to see who's the closest, a villager or a hero. They'll always go to the closest one. If there's a villager and a hero that are the same distance, they'll always go towards a hero. If there's a hero and a villager in the same space, they'll always attack the hero, not the villager. Except for if you have the wolfman, sometimes wolfman will attack everyone in the same space. So be careful of that. But we'll start with Frankenstein. He is going to take one step into here and attack Elizabeth. And very likely, he's going to kill her. So we'll roll these two dice. Oh, yeah. Two damage. So those are damage. Those are misses. And then that is when they do their special ability. So Elizabeth, unfortunately, is gone. And that's going to increase our terror track. We'll move it up to one. Then the bride is going to move. Nice and simple. She's just going to move to here. She only has one movement. And that's the only way she can go to get as close as she can to two different heroes. Finally, we'll have our frenzied enemy go, and that will be Frankenstein again. He gets one more movement. Now, the professor is three away. One, two, three. The, um, uh, the mayor is three away. So we can decide which way we want to go. I think because the mayor will have a turn before the professor, we'll have him go this way. So we've now completed the professor's turn. We're going to go ahead and move to the mayor. With the mayor, I feel like this is as good a time as any because we have the archaeologist one away from getting attacked and she's around three out of the four monsters on the board. She's going to play Break of Dawn. So we're going to skip the next monster phase. So we're not going to reveal any monster cards and we get to draw and place two items from the bay. So we'll grab one item from here. We've got the tower. Oh, that's actually nice. And we have the laboratory. The mayor has a basic five actions. That's the only thing she can do. So she's going to go one, two, come into the inn, grab all three of these items for action three, and then action four, come back to here, and action five, move to the precinct. That's all we're going to do, and we don't have to draw any cards, so we'll move on to the archaeologist. The reason I didn't want the bride to move is because we have those items, those blue items right at her location, and I want the archaeologist to be able to pick those up and use them to start showing her how to be human as well. So remember his ability is that he can pick up items from an adjacent space. We have four actions. Let's do it. His first action will be to go ahead and grab both of these blue items. Okay, he can do that because it's adjacent. That was action one. Action two is he'll move into the tower. Action three, he will then give up this research token to go ahead and try and help the bride learn to be human. We'll use the two here. So we increase her humanity by two, and then we can move her up to two spaces. We'll go ahead and move her to the barn. One, two. Okay, just keep her far away. So we have one action that we used, two to move there, three to do that. We have one more. Ah, do I really want to move to the theater? I've got another blue item. You know, actually, I wonder if I should have done it this way, but then I wouldn't have an item. So the reason why I want to keep this item is for protection. Because remember, if I take damage, I can discard that so I don't get hurt. I could move him out, but I think I'm just going to leave him in the tower. I don't really want to move him any closer to the bride in case she activates. But if she only moves one, then she won't actually get to him. And then hopefully next time he can go ahead and help her again with... Uh, what does he have now? It's called a kite. So you can help her with a kite. Okay, so we'll skip our fourth action. Let's go ahead and draw our monster card. We'll flip that top card, and we have zero new items. Then this is a specific card for the creature. If the creature wasn't playing, we would not do this event. But this says, place the creature at the waterfront. So I'll go ahead and do that. And then these three enemies will activate. Oh, look at that. The bride is going to activate, but she's only going to move one. Yes, okay, that was worth it. So this is the wolf man. He's not on the board. Doesn't happen. The bride will activate and then Frankenstein will activate. They each move one. If they're in range of, of a hero or a villager, they'll roll three dice, which is a lot. <laughs> the waterfront location is way down here. So the creature goes right over here. Fortunately, no one's over there. Then the bride will move one spot. And then Frankenstein will also move one because we do have uh, the mayor right here. Okay, now we'll move to the professor. Now, the professor has the ability to move other heroes. Now, if you look here, we are one away right here, you guys, from having these two to connect. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play for free the mob justice. Place either Frankenstein or the bride in any space. So I'll go ahead and use that. That's discarded. And then we'll have Frankenstein go all the way... Hmm, I'm thinking all the way to the hospital. So that's way down here. Just so you guys can see. Sorry about that. Way back here. Okay. So they're not so close together. 
And then what we're going to do for our four actions is actually move our archaeologist one, two, three, four. All four. He's got a blue item. It's only a one, so it's not great for the bride. If we discard a blue in the camp location, we'll move up three spaces to finding his lair. So I felt like, hey, that's actually kind of nice. Let's go ahead and do that. That was all of our four actions, though, so we'll go ahead and draw a monster card. We'll flip it and see what we get. We get two new items, and then the, uh, the event there is for the wolfman, which isn't in play, so we don't have to worry about that. We'll have one at the tower and one at the docks, and then we'll have the creature activate, and then Frankenstein himself will activate, moving one and rolling two dice. The creature will activate first. Let's see. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, definitely not there. So I think he's going to move here for one. And then Frankenstein will move here for one. The only problem with me putting him here at the hospital, I should have really probably put him at the crypt, you guys. But that's my own fault. I did it, so I'm going to have to deal with it. It's the mayor's turn now. The first thing that she's going to do is do her solve ability here on the precinct. She can place one in item, and I think what she's going to place is one red, and she'll place it here. So you can see it can be any of these colors, but it has to have the name that matches. So I've got an in, and I've got an in. So now we just need four more, the barn, the institute, the laboratory, and the mansion. Action two will go ahead and pick up both of these items, because they're just too good not to pick up. <laughs> she's now got four items. And then action three, action four, and action five. So we're both in the camp. We're going to do some serious creature lair hunting. <laughs> okay, let's draw a monster card. We'll flip that top card. And we've got an invisible man ability, so it's going to happen. First thing, items. So we'll have an item in the camp, which is right where we're at. Awesome. And an item in the church. Okay, so we'll place those two out. We have thief. Place the invisible man at the location with the most items and discard all the items there. Ugh. Okay, the mummy will activate, not on the board. The creature will activate, is on the board. And you see that bummer. Frankenstein's going to come and attack the professor. And he's got no items. And he's going to roll three dice. And that's all on me, you guys. I, ugh, bad planning. Sorry. Actually, you guys, this is also really bad. Because we're going to place the third item in the camp here. And then I've got one for the church, which is fine. But the problem is, is that the uh, camp is the only one that has three items. So the invisible man is just going to show up at camp and steal all of these. I was going to use those to do a bunch of pushing at the creature's location. Can't do it now. And now we've got the invisible man sitting here in the camp with us. Uh, okay, it is what it is. The creature will activate first. He is one, two, three, four away from the professor. One, two, three, four away from here. I think I'm going to have him go towards the professor because the professor is most likely going to die. And then we have Frankenstein. He's going to move into here. And he's rolling three dice, you guys. Not just one, not just two, three. And he hits twice. So the professor is defeated. That's going to increase our terror track. Now he'll be off the board and he'll start off at the hospital at the beginning of his next turn. We'll increase the terror track to two. And don't forget, we did roll the exclamation point, and the explanation point for Frankenstein and the Bride is the Bride moves one space towards Frankenstein. <laughs> yeah, so you can see at the beginning, it's hard. And right now, I've got four monsters on the board, so it's, it's a challenge. But what a lot of people are complaining about this game, and I can definitely see it, is as you defeat monsters, the game gets easier instead of harder. So the, challenge, the most challenge of this game is at the beginning of the game. But for whatever reason, it's still a lot of fun, so <laughs> I'm enjoying it. Okay, now we'll move to the archaeologist. Our first action for the archaeologist will be to discard this blue item, the kite, so we can move our boat up to here. Okay, now our next actions are going to be to run away from the invisible man. Action two will be to move to here. Action three will be to grab up, grab up, <laughs> grab this item from the mansion because we can take from an adjacent location. And action four is going to be to move here. The reason I want that mansion item is I can go to the precinct now and get our second item for the Invisible Man. At the end of our turn, we'll flip our monster card, and we have three new items. It's actually really nice. We, since we lost three items, there weren't a ton on the board. So we're going to have one in the Institute. Gosh, they're all down at the bottom right, though. One at the Laboratory. Well, yeah. And one at the Tower. Okay. And they're all blue. We now will have the delivery guy show up. He'll be placed, uh, or we'll place Wilbur and Chick at the shop. Okay, and that's exactly where the creature is. Uh, the creature isn't going to activate, though, so maybe we can still save him. We'll see. 
Uh, but who is going to activate is Frankenstein, and then the Bride, and then Frankenstein again. Moving one and rolling three dice. We've placed Wilbur and Chick here. Now let's go ahead and activate our enemies. Oh no, you guys, the bride is right here. Oh, man, see, this is the thing about this game. When there are four enemies out, four monsters, these villagers sometimes have no chance. Because watch this. First, we have Frankenstein move here. Then we're going to have the bride move here, and she's going to roll three wonderful dice. And she is definitely going to kill <laughs> Wilbur and Chick. So our terror track will go up yet again, which I'll do in a second, because then our last thing is Frankenstein is going to move here, and that should be it. Our terror track has now moved up to three. We'll now move back to the professor. He had to go to the hospital because he was attacked by Frankenstein. Uh, he's got four actions. What do we want to do? To start the professor's turn, I think the first thing we're going to do is play late into the night. Our archaeologist has this. Now we've played all of our perk cards. We haven't had a villager stay out for more than a quarter of a round, so we haven't been able to get any more. But this is going to give us two additional actions. So we've got a total of six. So we're going to go one. Action two, we're going to grab our wine. Action three, we're going to come here. Action four, we're going to use our wine on Frankenstein. That'll cool off Frankenstein a little bit. He'll move to a six. We're now halfway to 11. The biggest thing this lets us do is move Frankenstein two spaces to get himself away from the, his bride. Thank goodness. I have two more actions. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go one over here and pick up this tablet from the museum. Those items are super important, you guys, because they really help protect you. <laughs> okay. So we have three new items. That's great. Keep them coming. I need some of them in the top right corner. No, no, not the laboratory. That's not where I need more. Uh, the graveyard, that'll work. That's the top. No, that's the bottom left or bottom right. And the theater. There we go. That's at least somewhat close. We'll place our hurried assistant here. Kind of looks like Hunchback. <laughs> we'll place him, um, Fritz, in the tower. And then we've got Frankenstein, the bride, and Frankenstein going, moving one and doing two dice for an attack. Frankenstein will move first, so he'll move one here. The bride will move next, she'll move one here. Now, Frankenstein activates again. He is two away from the professor and two away from the mayor. <laughs> I'm going to say that he's going to go towards the mayor. <gasps> oh, that's, uh, otherwise, we would have another terror increase. Yeah, that wouldn't be good. Moving on to the mayor, the first thing she's going to do is give up this searchlight so that we can move this to finding the creature to the blue spot. Then we will discard the, uh, yeah, let's see. Yep, the dart for number two. So that's action two, and then I'll move us to the red here. Then we're going to discard the pistol. The pistol will move us to red again, which is all the way up over here. That's awesome. That was three actions. We've got two more. Action four, we're going to move over here to where Frankenstein is. And action five, we're going to discard some garlic to try and make him a little bit more human. And we're going to push him two spaces away. You guys, we're getting close on Frankenstein. That's good. We're at eight out of 11. Before we draw, I forgot to place Fritz. He's over here. He's trying to go to the Institute. We will now move to the monster activation and we have no new items. We do not have the mummy out. We do not have the Wolfman. We do not have Dracula, but the invisible man's going to activate. The mayor has no items. She is going to get attacked with two dice. We're likely going to increase that threat track again. The Invisible Man will move here and we'll roll two dice. Ah, I was almost going to miss, but no. So she will be removed from the board. She'll come back in the hospital after or at the beginning of her turn. And our threat goes to four. Yeah, we're over halfway to losing and we haven't even gotten one of these off the board. <laughs> Moving to the archaeologist's turn, I'm going to spend one action to move here. I know I was planning on going to the precinct, but I think I really want to save Fritz. I want to get another perk card, and I don't really want to deal with more terror increase. <laughs> action two, because of my ability, I can collect these two items. Action three, I'm going to pull Fritz to my location. And act of action four, I'm going to grab the theater item as well. So we've just spent four actions, but we now have four items for protection. And we've got Fritz so we can bring down to the Institute, which we need for the police precinct anyways. We'll flip our enemy card and we get three new items. So we have the uh, a yellow item. 
we have an item for the mansion, another yellow item. Oh, those are really good for Frankenstein. And another yellow item. Okay. We also will have the Egyptian expert place Professor Pearson at the cave, and only Frankenstein's going to activate, and he's going to move two spaces. The cave is way up here. We've already placed our items. You can see the mansion and the museum and the inn over there. But then Frankenstein's going to activate. Now, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. He's going to go towards the professor. One, two. They're both non human yet. So that's not good. That's going to increase our terror track. He's going to move back over to the graveyard and she's going to move back to the dungeon. But <laughs> another terror increase. Only two more, you guys, and we lose. I think it's time we tame Frankenstein. What do you think? I think Frankenstein and the Bride are really being the most difficult <laughs> of enemies so far. So we're going to do one move for the Professor, two move for the Professor, three move to, for the Professor, and his fourth is going to be to use the tablet here, and that is going to use the last three that we need for Frankenstein. He's currently at eight, nine, ten, eleven. He now realizes that he is human. We'll discard this, and we can move him three spaces. Our only problem is the professor has no items, so I'm being risky yet again. <laughs> and, you know, with him being the frenzied one, he moves around the most. We'll at least push him over to the museum. One, two, three. Perfect. We'll go ahead and flip our monster card, and we get two new items. So we'll grab this one. That's going to go in the institute yet again. And we've got the shop. And we'll have the creature activate and we'll have Frankenstein activate. Now, looking here, this item or this event is for the Wolfman, so that doesn't happen. The creature will take one step this way because he sees the archaeologist, and Frankenstein will move right here. It's our mayor's turn. She'll start off in the hospital. I think all she's gonna do is go one, two, three, four, and then pick up all of these in the laboratory. She is going to head straight to the bride, and we're going to try and complete a monster set ASAP. We'll flip our card, and we have two new items. So our new items will be, we get one at the church, some more wine, and one red at the mansion. We also have the meeting, move the bride two spaces towards Frankenstein, and then the creature and the invisible man will move two and roll one die. First, we'll have the bride move. Moving two, we'll put her with the archaeologist, but she doesn't attack. That was the special ability, or the event card. Then we have the creature moving two, but he'll move here, and he'll roll one die. He's attacking the archaeologist. The archaeologist takes one point of damage, so he's just going to discard the theater, I think, because that's not as important. And then we have the invisible man, though. He's going to move two. And he's going to try and attack. Oh, wait. Never mind. One, two. He can actually go here. Thank goodness. Look at that. It's the creature meeting. Okay. And we're going to roll a die. He's attacking the archaeologist who still has uh, three items. So he'll be okay. Ooh, an exclamation point. What is his? His exclamation point is he moves two spaces towards the closest villager. He's already in a location with the villager, so he won't move. Wow. That was good. That was good. Okay, now we're going to move to the archaeologist's turn, and he's going to run. He's simply going to go one, two, three, four. And when you move, you can bring a villager with you. So he brought Fritz to the Institute. So Fritz says, thank you, and we get to draw a perk card. And we have move a hero up to four spaces, a rush. Ooh, that is nice. And the other thing that's nice is we're in a location with a ton of Institute, and it's even more blue. So that's great. We'll flip the top monster card, and we get two more items. So we have one for the barn, and we have one for the theater. And then this is for Dracula, so that doesn't happen. But we do have the invisible man and the creature activating, moving one. We'll start with the invisible man. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. So he's going to move one here. Same with the creature. Both moving one. That's it. So we're going to move now to the professor. Moving on to the professor's turn, the first thing he'll do is move the mayor with his ability for action one. Action two, he's going to grab these two items. Action three, he's going to come into this location. Oh, or I could do action three. 
No, I'm, I think I'm going to do it. I, I think he'll have to move on his own. Action three here and action four, grab the wine. He's got three items, but he's got to get himself out of that graveyard. He's got to get into the actual board. Okay, let's draw our enemy cards. I think our goal next time is to maybe get the bride fully tamed. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, we get no new items. The creature's just going to go to the lagoon. We're going to have the bride activate, and then we're going to have Frankenstein activate. Each one moving one space. It looks like, to me, the creature wasn't enjoying hanging out with the Invisible Man. I can understand that. That can freak anybody out. Then we have, after that, uh, the Bride's going to activate. She's going to move one, one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. We'll have her move this way, because that's the way I kind of want her to move. And then Frankenstein, though, is going to move into here with the Professor, and he's rolling three dice. He's got three items, so I don't want to have to use all three now. Oh, okay. One hit. So he'll discard one item. Let's have him discard this yellow, the wine. And then their ability is move the bride one space towards Frankenstein. <laughs> one, two. She is one away. This has better work for the mayor. I'm hoping this will work because they are right next to each other. If we can convince her she's human, then they can get together and we can actually get rid of two monsters on the board. Let's do this. For the mayor's first action, We'll go ahead and pick up all of these glorious items. That's action one. She has a ton of blue items. Thank you to Fritz and the archaeologist, we have Rush. So we can now move her four spaces. One, two, three. It's up to four, so we'll move her to where the bride is. She still has four more actions. With four more actions, action two, we're going to spend this blue so that we can increase her humanity. Now, it says that we have to move her that many spaces. I think this is legal, but I'm just going to have her move to an adjacent location and move back to the same location because I want her there again. For action three, doing the same thing here. And then for action four, <laughs> do the same thing here. She is at eight, and now we are going to move her. We're going to move her just one space and have her move into Frankenstein space. And that will actually defeat them. Because it says if both dials show the monster faces, they are defeated. Otherwise, we increase the terror level. So just to show you what I was thinking that I was doing. So every time I did a blue, I went one, two, move two spaces, did another move two spaces. And then I would do the move two, but I'd move her to here. They see each other and they go, oh, we're human. And they dance and they leave. <laughs> so that's great. One monster set down, two to go. Now, we have our Enrage token. That has to go onto the creature now because the creature is level 4 versus the Invisible Man being level 6. But now we only have two enemies on the board. We just got rid of two of them, you guys. That will really help. Now, we still have one more action, so I think we're going to move her to the mansion for her fifth action. Okay, let's draw her monster card. And we get three new items. So we'll have one uh, in the barn, one in the camp. Oh, that's nice in the camp. And one in the institute. Then we're going to bring out a former employee, place Dr. Cranley at the laboratory. And then both the invisible man and the creature are going to move, moving one, potentially rolling two dice if they attack. We'll place Dr. Cranley here. And it just so happens we're going to the precinct. That's not bad. What is bad is the enemy activation. The invisible man is going to move one space, so he'll move here. We're okay. But the creature will move one space over to here to Professor Pearson. And if he gets a hit here and we're rolling two dice, we are one tear away from losing. And he gets two hits. So, yeah. Professor Pearson is toast. And that means now we're at level six out of the seven tear. We may have convinced Frankenstein and the Bride that they are human. But that doesn't mean the game's over. <laughs> Moving to the archaeologist, I think what we're going to do is spend one action just to move here. Then we're going to hang out with Dr. Cranley. We're going to say, we'll bring you there. Action two, we're going to come here. Action three, we're going to pick up these two items just for protection. And action four, we're going to move ourselves to here. Okay, let's get a monster card. We'll flip it. And we have a zero. This effect doesn't happen. The only activation will be the invisible man moving one and rolling two dice. The Invisible Man will move to where the Archaeologist is, and he'll roll two, and he gets two hits. That's okay. We'll discard these two blues. That's not bad. The Professor is pretty far away from anything, so I think he's just going to use his ability to move heroes or villagers. So I think this is legal. I think he can move a hero 
And then if he's moving the hero, the villager, villager will move with him. You know what? I honestly don't know. There's nothing specific about the abilities. So we'll just play it the hard way and say I can't do that. Or that I can, but it'll take two actions. So it'll be one, two, and then actually I'm going to go three, four. I'm going to move them all the way to the barn. And you'll see why I'm doing that. I need the barn. I need a barn item. <laughs> Our enemy card will be, oh, okay, a zero. And we have the creature, after killing that villager, probably had some food. <laughs> place him at the river, and then we'll just have the creature actually activate because we don't have the bride anymore and we don't have the wolf man. The creature will go and take a break and then realize, no, I'm still, I'm still unhappy. I'm enraged. So I'm going to move one space here. He's one away from the mayor. But now it is the mayor's turn. The first thing the mayor is going to do is pick up these two items for action one. She'll go action two, action three, action four, and a final action, she is going to do the solve here on the precinct. She is going to place the centrifuge into here for the laboratory. So that's action five. We'll now draw our card and we have two new items. So we'll have to place those items out first. And we have one in the laboratory and one in the inn. Oh my gosh, that's really lucky that we got that, the inn because then we're going to place the invisible man in a location and he's going to steal everything. And then just the creature is going to activate moving one. Why I say we're lucky is we're going to put this in the inn. This will go into the laboratory. But now the invisible man is going to move to a location with the most items. That's the barn. And now that's also the inn. <laughs> so we're going to pick the inn, not the barn, because we need a barn item. And he's going to take those two items away. And then the creature is going to activate. He'll just take one step towards the mayor. The archaeologist will go next. He'll grab both of these items for action one. For action two, he'll move here to the theater. For action three, he'll move here. And then for action four, he's going to drop off Dr. Cranley at the precinct. So that means we get another perk. And let's see if it's a two additional actions. It's only going to use it. Place a hero in any non-water space. Oh, that's cool. We might use that later. We'll flip our monster card. Oh, interesting. We have one of these on the move. Okay, we'll draw three items. So we've got one in the abbey, one in the barn, and one in the mansion. Now, what it says is move the frenzy marker to the next monster. So now, instead of the creature being frenzied, the invisible man is going to be frenzied. And then it also says move each villager one space towards their safe location. Well, I just completed all the villagers. There aren't any on the board, so that doesn't happen. But now the enraged enemy, which is the invisible man, which makes sense because he's figuring out that we're going to catch him. He's going to move three and attack with two dice. We'll go ahead and move the invisible man. He will come into the precinct. Now, if there's two heroes there, we can decide who he's going to attack and we're going to have him attack the archaeologist. And he's going to do one point of damage. The archaeologist is going to discard this, the stake, so he's safe. Our professor is going to go next. He's going to go one, two, pick up this mansion item for three, and move himself here. He has three items for protection, and I think we're going to start heading towards the camp. He's going to start focusing on that creature while the other two take care of the invisible man. We'll flip our card for our enemy, <laughs> and we get another on the move. So now the frenzied enemy is going to be the creature. We get three new items, one in the docks, one in the tower, and another in the tower. And then the frenzied enemy, which is now the creature, is going to move one and attack for two dice. I guess he'll move three, but they're all the, the heroes are all adjacent. I think we're going to have the creature, because he is one away from either of them, go to the professor, and he's going to attack with two dice, and he gets one hit. Let's see if you can see that. So the professor will discard his graveyard shovel. <laughs> he was hanging out there. He found a shovel, right? Makes sense. Okay, now we go to the mayor. The mayor is going to use the ability on the precinct to drop the mansion token right here for action one. Then she'll drop the institute token here for number two. So all we need is the barn. And you know who has that? The archaeologist. Then we're going to have the archaeologist play a taxi ride. So this is free. We can place a hero in any non-water space. And we're going to move the mayor. The mayor is going to take the taxi and go right over to the camp. She still has three more actions. Her action three is she's going to discard this fire poker. That's going to move the boat to here. 
And then she's going to, for action four, discard this, what is this, um, anatomy text. That will move her to the blue. And then for her final one, she has the Raton here. And she's going to discard that. And we have now found his lair. So now all we have to do is get into his space, discard a yellow, a red, and a blue item, and we can defeat the creature. But the mayor has no items, so it's a little bit risky. But we do have the professor there essentially blocking for her. We'll go ahead and flip our card. And we have, okay, three new items. So our three new items will be those three, the docks, uh, mansion, and the precinct. We will place Renfield at the docks, because he's kind of insane. And then we will have the creature activate rolling two dice against the professor. Renfield is way over here on the right side of the board at the docks. I think we're probably just going to ignore him. But now is when it gets a little bit interesting. So the professor has two items left. We're going to roll two dice from the creature attacking since he is the one that is uh, in uh, frenzied. Okay, he only took one damage, so he'll discard this uh, fire poker. But he only has one left. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can do this. So our next item will be to have the archaeologist go. This is kind of crazy, you guys, how this worked out. But the Invisible Man is all worried about us figuring him out and telling the police. He's at the police precinct right now. So the archaeologist will use the ability to pl place the torch here. And he, we have completed the supply evidence. And then for action two, because the uh, Invisible Man is at our location, we have 12 worth of points of red items on our archaeologist. That is more than nine. We have just defeated our second enemy. The Invisible Man is off the board. That is our second monster gone. We only have one more to go. Our third action then will be to pick up this red item. So we have one yellow, one red, and we need one blue to be able to defeat the creature. So I need to go get a blue item. So I'm just going to move here for my final action. But now that creature is going to activate. And don't forget that creature is with the professor who only has one item. <laughs> so we get two new items. Oh my gosh, the creature isn't going to activate, you guys. Okay, no blue items. One in the camp and one in the museum. This doesn't happen because the invisible man is no longer there. And none of these are the creature or the frenzied creature or the frenzied enemy. So nothing happens except for putting out those two items. Moving to the professor's turn, let's see if we can do this. We're going to spend one action to move here. Action two is we're going to get both of these items. Action three, we're going to move here. Action four, we're going to move the archaeologist into our space. So what our goal is, we're then going to just have to survive until the archaeologist's turn. Because the archaeologist can grab this blue item for his action, since he can grab from adjacent locations, and defeat the creature. And that means the professor has three items to soak some damage. <laughs> is this going to work? That's the question. Let's uh, look at our next enemy card. We'll flip it, and we get two more items, and the creature is going to activate twice, you guys. So he's going to roll four dice. This is going to be interesting. We've got the barn and the church. We're going to protect that archaeologist if we can, so the professor is going to take the hit first. And we rolled only one hit. Awesome. So we'll lose this item. Then we'll have the professor hit again. And we roll just one hit. <sighs> okay, that's the one item. All right, so we've got the mayor's turn. Actually, let's see if the mayor can even do this. You guys, we are so close to letting the mayor be able to do this. She can move here for one, grab the two items from the archaeologist for two, come here for three, grab this for four, and move here for five. But then the problem is, is <laughs> she can't actually do the final action. She only has five. So I don't think we're going to do that. Instead, I think we're just simply going to go one, two, three. No, that's not even helpful. Ah, oh my gosh, you guys, this is intense. I don't know what to do. I don't think we can even help as the mayor. We don't have any items, so we can't be attacked. We can't get any more items to the professor because they're all too far away. So we could go one, two, three, pick that up. No, and I want this blue here. I don't want to take this and use it as defense because then the archaeologist will win the game so we're just going to take a chance we're not going to move let's see what happens we'll flip our card we get no new items uh we don't have dracula at all uh, the creature is going to attack with two dice so if he gets two hits on this we lose the game if he only gets one hit or no hits we win the game 
The creature's going to activate. He's going to attack the professor. He has one item. And we get one hit. <gasps> oh, man. Okay. So that means the archaeologist is going to go. Spend one action uh, from an adjacent location. He can grab the items. Action two. We use that to defeat him. Huh. That was fun. Okay. So you can see the game can get pretty tense. Um, and actually, it was tense all the way to the end for me. So that was good. But I could see how if you defeated that first creature really quickly... And if you only had two creatures on the board, it could be a little bit too easy and boring. But mine was certainly not that the case. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'm certainly keeping this because I think my son will really enjoy it. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you at the next stop.